welcome back fellow developers in today's video we will be diving into the best practices for html5 and css coding in microverse by following these guidelines you'll be able to write clean maintainable code that will impress your peers and make your project shine also in this video i would like to share a secret with tip with you so make sure you stay till the end of the video Without further ado, let's get started. So the first tip I'm giving you is to use the appropriate tags and HTML5 semantic tags. When structuring your HTML code, it's essential to use the appropriate tags for each element. For instance, Instead of relying on generic dive element, opt for HTML5 semantic tags like header, nav, section, and so on. This improves the accessibility and SEO friendliness of your website. In this example, we have I created a file, two files, good HTML and bad HTML. So as you can see, this HTML, let me lock this part. As you can see from the body, look at this HTML. We have dive, dive, just using dive, just using dive. So with, with this, with the, writing your code this way will not let us be able to read your code very well. Well, will not make your website SEO accessible. To write a good HTML, you should use the HTML5 semantic tag. Like when you are writing for header, you use the header tag. When you are writing for, writing for navigation, you use your nav, nav tag. And so on. Section and footer and so on, etc. So we have many different HTML semantic, HTML5 semantic tag. So you should always use it in your code instead of using the generic dive tag or span tag. So this is very important. And this is one of the best practices in microverse. The second tip I will be giving you is to avoid lines of code that are too long. You should avoid lines of code that are too long. So it's important to keep your code readable and manageable so avoid lines that exceed 100 characters in length if a line becomes too long consider breaking it into multiple lines to enhance readability look at this code for example we have this paragraph and i have this lorem it's one dollar seat <laughs> i can't read that but so this line of code is too long the line here is too long you can see as you can see this is too long and it will be difficult for us to read it will be difficult for us to read because we'll be scrolling we'll be scrolling left and right and to know if your line is too long if it is more than 100 lines you can check if you are using vs code you can check this part i can see this line of code where you go to the end of the line so we have 243, 243 lines, 243 columns. So, and the, the thing you can do is to break it down into, into multiple lines. Like you can find a way to break it down and see. Let's see if this is more than 100. I can see this one is too long. So we have more than uh, 100. So we have 124. You can break it down here since we have full stop here you can break it down here enter and when we see it now we have 69 69 columns and also here this one's too let's see how many lines we have we how many columns we have 131 so you find a place to break it we can break it here so with this part i can see this is more readable and uh, I, I i i even love this so look how it's look it's looks simple and moderate so this is also important and it's one of the best qualities you'll be using in microverse and even in your in your career path as a, as a web developer 
the next tip I'll be sharing with you guys according to the best practices in microverse is to use is to avoid unnecessary blank lines you should be mindful of blank lines and indentations for example look at this code we have here we have code like this like look look how this is like jargons because we have the spaces are not consistent and uh, look at this part we have blank blank lines i can see we have blank lines so look at this part look how look the indentation here too the indentation here is different is not consistent also so you should make your lines your your blank lines and your indentation you should make it consistent like for example look at this good html so if you even you notice that we have blank line so and here and it is consistent look here we have four four spaces look at this part too four spaces the indentation rather and the blank line we have just a blank line between this tag header tag and nav tag and also between nav tag and section tag we have a blank line so this will make your code needs and more accessible the next line i will be the next tip i'll be sharing with you guys is to always close all html elements always remember to close your html element properly by adding the respective closing tags this ensures the validity of your markups and prevents any unexpected issues so you should always close your tags your elements for example look at this nav nav has a closing tag so you shouldn't you shouldn't just write the opening tag along without the closing tag so this is not good and it's not a good practice so you should, you should always add closing tag so the next part i'm going to be talking about is using lowercase for elements and attribute names to maintain consistency and avoid any potential issues use lowercase letters for HTML element and attribute names so for example look at this element this section tag or this section element if i should use like capital letter for it so this is not okay and it is not a good practice so you should avoid using capital letters uppercase for element and also for the attribute you shouldn't which you shouldn't use a uh, capital uppercase for attribute names too so you should stay with lowercase for element and attribute names the next thing I'll be, i'm going to be talking about is that you should always close you should you should always use quotes for your attribute values you shouldn't just write your attribute values without quotes so you should always use quotes to insert your words to put your attribute value in it and also you should one of the best practices you should be you should be doing also is to avoid giving space between the attribute name and the attribute value so this is not a good practice according to microverse so you should always abide you should always use closing you should always close the the spaces between the attribute names and uh, attribute values so the next thing i'm going to be talking about is to avoid using inline because it is considered a best practice to separate your css styles into a separate file rather than using inline styles this promotes code modularity reusability and easier maintenance so look at this part like using something like this is not a good practice so style color so using inline styles is not a good practice so you should avoid doing that so the next thing i'm going to be talking about is avoid overusing the important rule the important rule what is it the important rule is for example we have these styles here we have header we have nav we have section we have footer we have h1 we have our what we called we have our paragraph we have header one so this style here we have this style and uh, it is basically always almost doing the same thing so we are setting the color 
to purple and the font size to 20. Now, to avoid using a, the important rule, the important rule is something like if we have, like we have this H1 with this color green, yellow, and we have another H1 with this color violet. Now, definitely, if I should show this in the browser, this color is going to be attached to H1 because when the CSS is being looking, when the CSS is looking, it's going to start from the beginning of the code and it's going to check this part and we have color here, green, yellow, it's going to apply it. Then when it, when it check down, it's going to see another H1 with the same color, color and property and it's going to use this violet for styling the H1. So to make us use this H green yellow, for, okay. Let before I proceed, let me show you the code so that you know what I'm talking about. Now this is the code. This is the output of the code. I can see this is our header, and the header is is having H1. Let me show you again. The header it is having H1. I open this file, go to HTML. And uh, I can see we have our header, it has H1 inside it. And the size we have, we gave for the H1 is 2. We gave the first color as green yellow and the second color as color violet. Now, if you check the browser, you will notice that the second color is the one that is used by the browser. Now, what I want to do is that I want to make the first color the important color I want to use, just like that. The important rule means, okay, I want this to be applied. I want this style to be applied. I want to use this style, regardless of the flow of the what, of the uh, code. So this is how you're going to do it. You just put the important exclamation and your important rule. So when we check VS Code, you see set the color of an element text. So it means it's going to set the, the, the color of this H1 text towards green yellow. Now let me save. And let's check again. Now, can you see now? We have this is our header. So this is now green yellow. I can change it to red again so it's going to be more visible. We have red. Now, if we check it and that save, I haven't saved. So I did not save. So let me save and let me check again. I can see we have this. So why is it using that? Because we use the important rule. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about you is always use the class attribute for multiple elements. Instead of using ID selectors for multiple elements, always use the class attribute. This allows you to apply the same styles to multiple elements without unnecessarily duplicating your code. What does that mean? Now look at this style. We have this style.css. You will notice that we have a lot of duplication. We have a lot of repetition. This color, we have color purple for header. We have font size 20 pixel for header. We have nav color purple for nav. We have color, we have font size. I can see we have this almost the same thing. So this is a lot of repetition. So one thing you can do, okay, sorry, I would like to use a uh, background color for this so that it's going to be applicable. It's going to be well organized. So now I'm using, let me, so now I have changed this to background color and let's see it in our browser again. So I can see we have background color. So let me change the color to something else like, uh, okay, let me use, uh, sorry. So let me change all the purple colors, all the background color to something else. Uh, let me think of a, okay, let me use yellow. Let me use yellow for the background color. And uh, how can I do that? Let me copy this purple and control F in VS Code. Now you come, you come here and click here you place here and write uh, yellow so it's going to replace all everything so that is it 
you save let me save again let me save and let's see it how it's going to look okay now this at least it is kind of visible so now the next thing now is we are repeating a lot of css styles so how can we solve this instead of using background color background color background color yellow, background color yellow so what you can just do is you can just use the class attribute how can i use this class attribute which file did i open i open uh the the good what is it the good html so what i can the best thing i can do is since i have background color class i can easily use this background color and use it to set and i'm going to add it to all other places i'm adding the background color i'm adding the background color in the nav too i'm adding the background color in the section i'm also adding the background color in the footer so now i'm going to do something now that will make my code more lovely so what i'm going to do is i can write it here and use background color oh sorry okay background color and uh, now i can just don't forget to space indentation copy this and use it here paste now since i have pasted it and all this the error has a class attribute of background bg color the nav also has an attribute of bg color so let me remove this background color from here since the nav also have this bg color now the same here also the section also has it so let me remove it also the foot i have uh, uh, has it so let me remove it so let me save and let's check our code and you see we have the same thing so we still have this now let me change this color again this background color and see if it's going to work for all the tags all the elements so let me use green and save then let's check again so i can see it all changes for all the sections all the tags all the elements so the same thing you can use the same thing with the font size too so let's do that quickly too you stand up using font size everywhere in your code with 20 pixels so what you can do is you go to your good html file and change like this one i'm not using this mg now let me just change this let me copy this and change it in all in all you control f then you replace you click this arrow you replace this with uh, i want to font font size okay let me use it this way font size replace this replace this replace this i'll replace i've replaced everything so now i can save and i will go back to my style and instead of having this one i can this just remove this and uh use something like this since the the name of the class is font size so now i have changed the font size for the header so let me delete this now let me delete the rest too since we already have the font size now don't forget to save and let's check again i can see we have the same thing now if i should now change let me change the font size to see if it's going to work for everything let me use like okay uh let me use like 40 let me use 40 to test it good can you see now we have the changes here we have the changes here and uh why others are not changing oh, let me check i can see we only have this one change this one the navigations are the only ones that change your, the, its font so this one did not change so why let's see okay i can see we have the font size here too so this one is going to definitely override this one for the paragraph and also for the header this one is also going to override this one for the header so let's we can change that and you can also let me use like uh okay 15 15 oh no sorry not 15 let me use 26 pixels for the header 
and uh, for this paragraph let me use 16 pixels so this way you are making your code more accessible and free of duplication so let's see again so I can see we have this and let me return the changes so let me put this to 30 so let's check again so I can see it has reduced so this is a way you can work on your on duplications of size of size by using the class attribute now the last thing I'm going to be talking about before the secret don't forget I said I'm going to tell you a secret tip that you need to do so the last part I'm going to be talking about is avoid committing old code as inline comments so it is wrong to commit old code in as an inline comment so keeping your code base clean is crucial for easy maintenance avoid leaving old code as inline comments as it can make your project look messy and confusing so that is well as uh, what that mean is you shouldn't like let me give an inline comment here so this is a comment so it is not a good practice to commit this code to your github so it is not a good practice so you should avoid you should avoid committing inline code to your code base and here comes the secret if you follow these guidelines diligently combined with the other best practice i'll be showing you in my upcoming videos you will significantly increase chances of landing a code reviewer job at microverse so this is the secret so if you want a job in microverse like code reviewer job you should still well abide with all these guidelines microverse is giving you so keep up the great work and stay tuned for more valuable insight. And that is it for today's video on HTML and CSS best practices in Microverse. By following these guidelines, you'll be on your way to writing cleaner and more maintainable code, increasing your chances of securing a code reviewer's job. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more valuable content until next time happy coding